So I'm really excited about this next video as it's the start of a whole video series where I'm going to be building my first modular kit. One of the things about modular, I've always been just so fascinated by it, how you can create your own unique instrument that's unlike anybody else's, design it yourself. It's always just been something I really wanted to get into, but it's an extremely intimidating world. I've been doing a ton of research for way too long and mulling over different options. If you've watched the channel before, you know that I have the Moog Sound Studio, and that's been a huge step forward to, for me in learning patching and how to do all these things with hardware sense. Much of my experience has come from the VST world. You know, I discovered VSCs probably about 20 years ago. I bought a DAW, came packaged with some, some synths, and I just started playing around with it, and I was hooked. I've been composing and playing VSTs for years. Only recently did I start getting into the, to the hardware world. Right from the beginning, the intention was to start building a modular synth. I went down the Moog path because it was just too much at first. There were too many options. It cost so much money up front that I, I felt a little bit overwhelmed by it. And so when the when the Moog Sound Studio came out, I I decided to go that route and just get some semi-modular synths and learn from there. So now I'm at a point where I'm ready to take the leap and jump into modular. I've done extensive research, probably too much research and I have come up with a great path from the sound studio into modular. For my first build I'm going to intentionally use it with the sound studio so as I get uh, modules I'm, they're going to be integrated into the sound studio. So I wanted to share with you uh, what, my what I found from my research for first modules and hopefully if it's something that you're looking to get into you can either look at at what I've found and and you can go out and get the same things or similar things and it'll help you build your own first synth. So if you go on online forums or ask people who are into modular what should I get started with? The first thing they're going to tell you is you got to plan it. And I can't even tell you how many times I heard that. And it was kind of frustrating at first because I had no idea what I was looking for. Some other advice I was hearing was make sure to get a case that's bigger than you think you need because you're going to grow into it and things like that. So it, Overall, the, every time I was getting advice, it just ended up stopping me in my tracks because I was overwhelmed with too many choices and yeah, it just wasn't working. Here's what I decided to do. I'm going to start really small. Each one of these modules will be usable right out of the gate with the Moog Sound Studio. So the first things first, is you got to get a case and there are so many different cases out there the advice that i always get from people is that you should buy a case that is bigger than you need but i ultimately decided not to go for that i went for the cheapest most accessible case possible because it's really demoralizing to spend a ton of money on a case when you don't have any modules. So throwing down three, $400 for a case and power supply when you have absolutely no modules to put into it, it just didn't sit right with me. I am going with the Tip Top Audio Happy Ending Kit. Right now, as of this video, it's on sale from Perfect Circuit for $110, just about. It's 84 HP, so it can hold a decent amount of modules. I'll be able to put enough modules in there so it can be full synth on its own, separate from the sound studio. But it's small enough that if I stick one module in it, 
then I can use it with the sound studio and I can grow from there. I did consider building a case myself. I have no doubt that I'm probably gonna do that down the line. I enjoy woodworking. It seems fairly simple. I'm gonna buy the power supply, build my own custom case. For this build, when you priced it out, the Zeus power supply that comes with it, I think is like $85 on its own. And then to get the machined rails that the, the screws come in, it ended up being just about the same as just getting the kit. So I went with the kit down the road. I might find that it's too small and want something bigger, but that's the cost of entry. Pay $130 and you have got the power supply and a case checked off and you can go from there. So let's take a look at the rest of my build. The first module I'm gonna purchase and integrate into the Sound Studio is the Mutable Instruments Plat. First of all, I really wanted a second oscillator. It's a digital oscillator, so it's gonna sound very different than what's already in the sound studio. If you're just getting into modular, I think that mutable instruments, you're gonna find it everywhere. They're kind of like the cream of the crop um, and they're shutting down shop pretty soon. Um, so in light of all of that, I decided that Flats was where I was gonna start. All of their designs are open source and there's tons of clones out there that you can save a little bit of money. I decided that for my first purchase, I was gonna go out and get a real mutable instruments oscillator just so I knew what I was, what it felt like, what it sounded like. If I decide to go with different types of oscillators, Platts has so much flexibility, it can create drum sounds and all kinds of other stuff. The next module is the Cumulus. This is by After Later Audio. It's a clone of the Mutable Instruments Cloud. It's a granular delay and reverb. Effects modules are also a really great way that you can build on the sound studio. I did a lot of asking around about the different types of clones out there. Um, and after later audio just kept coming up and again and again and again. They seemed like a really great company, very small outfit. And they just released this newly designed line of mutable instruments clones. The Dofer Dual ADSR. Now Dofer is another company that I really wanted to make sure that I gave a shot. They're the ones that introduced the whole Eurorack format and are kind of like an old school company that has been in this business for years. A lot of their modules have this cool utilitarian look to them. They're not flashy. And from what I hear, they just have great functionality in our classic Eurorack modules. So for something like an envelope where I wanted a simple ADSR envelope, that's where I went. But on the mother, you know, you only have one ADSR. So I wanted to make sure to at least get one, but I bought the double module because down the road, this build is going to function as its own thing. So while all this was going on and while I was doing all my planning, Put up some gear for sale and I got a trade offer for another after later audio uh, module called the Popple. It wasn't one that I was initially looking at. I was going to try to get a variety of different brands of modules. And since I already had the Cumulus from after later audio, I was probably going to get a filter from someone else. But when this came up, someone wanted to trade for something that I was trying to sell. So I jumped on it. It's a copy of Mutable Instruments Ripples, which is a stereo filter. The Quad VCA VC Mixer from Dofer. And once I have that module put in, then this build can function as its own synth. And then the last three modules that I'm gonna integrate are also from Dofer. Quad LFO, just wanted some modulation sources and I wanted to keep it really simple at first. And to complement it, I also bought this dual attenuator. And finally, one of the things that I love about the Matriarch are its, its multiples. The Mother 32 has one malt and I use it a ton. So I bought a passive multiple that as a utility, but just give me some extra flexibility. 
and I could make some of the more complex patches that I've been doing on the Matriarch. Um, and now I can do that on the sounds also. So that's overall where I'm starting. I did have this six HP section right in the middle that I was like, oh, I gotta fill it with something. But I decided to leave that blank just at the start because this is a good first build that's gonna give me a functional synth that's gonna be usable and that I might record with. Um, it certainly integrates well with the sound studio. And from here, either I can buy a module to fit it, who knows what's gonna happen. But, uh, but that's the starting place. So I hope you found this video interesting. I'll put links to everything, including this modular grid rack in the descriptions below. If you've used any of these modules, I'd love to hear your experience with them. If there's other ones that you think people would really like better than some of my choices, make sure to put those in the comments too. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you got something out of it. Don't forget to subscribe below so you can get updates on how this build and future builds are going. And we'll see you next time.